Good morning. St. Anthony of Padua's parish family welcomes all who have gathered for our liturgy for the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Before we begin our liturgy, you are kindly requested to turn off all electronic devices, including cell phones. This weekend, we celebrate the Feast of St. Blaise. Immediately after Mass, there will be a blessing of the throats for those who would like to receive it. Job's cry of hopelessness stands in marked contrast to the hope of those who put their trust in Jesus, who heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Such are the blessings of the good news. This liturgy is being offered for the happy repose of the souls of Santa Moad, Anthony Moad, and also for the people of the parish. We begin our prayer by standing and joining in singing number 616, Praise the Lord the Almighty, number 616. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning. morning, uh, Father Elias has arrived back from uh, a a month away in Africa. He uh, arrived late Friday night, so I asked him yesterday, I said, what day, he asked me, what day is it? Because when you travel, you know, all the time changes and everything like that. So he uh, is back with us, and I'm glad to have him back. So I'm glad you had a good time. So we gather together as a parish family to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our faith as we prepare to do so. We call to mind our own sins, asking the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth.
Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The readings can be found at number 1105. 1105. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of the hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, When shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. The words to the antiphon of the psalm are, Praise the Lord, who heals the brokenhearted. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all so as to win over as many as possible. 
To the weak, I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into the synagogues preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. So last week, we talked a little bit about the structure of the Liturgy of the Word, where the first reading, the responsorial psalm, and the gospel all somehow are linked. Usually the gospel and the first reading, there's a theme, and then the responsorial psalm is a response using God's Word to the first reading. And then the second reading typically is independent, and is usually from Paul's uh, letters, little portions each week um, throughout the, the ordinary time. So, today's gospel, and I think I encourage everyone, I said, uh, it's really helpful if you have an opportunity to read the scriptures, to read at least the gospel before you come to church on Sunday. So, by a show of hands, I'd like to see who has, no, I'm just kidding. But seriously, I would encourage you to, to do that, because I, 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 watched, I watched faces during the readings, and like the first reading from Job, this is what I saw, what, huh? What? Uh, what? I don't like. And there's the truth to that. Even after I've read it a couple of times, there's still a little bit like, you know, if you listen on one surface, it's like Debbie Downer, you know? But if you really take that passage from that reading and reflect upon it, we know the story of Job. Job was a righteous man who experienced terrible tragedy and suffering in his life, right? He lost his job. He lost his, uh, his wealth. He was, a, you know, many of, of all his animals died. All his houses were destroyed. All his children were killed. And then he got physically ill and had terrible sores. And then three of his friends came to try to give him some religious advice, which is horrible advice. And 
basically it's leaving us with this sense of this man who's experienced really hopelessness. And so today it captures just a little fragment of what he's experienced. But let's just take a look for a brief moment a little bit closer to, to that. He says this. Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Can you relate to life being a drudgery? Having to go through day by day, nothing seems to change. You get moments of feeling overwhelmed. The same old, same old. He is like a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. (laughs) Have you experienced not getting paid on time and bills coming at you? And your boss says, it's coming, it's coming, but you have bills you have to pay. Or this image of a worker in the field who is working for someone else and lots of demands and it's hot outside and the sun's beating down and all you're longing for is just a minute of rest. Can you relate to that in your own experiences working? Or perhaps troubled nights If in my bed I say, when shall I arise? And then the night drags on. (laughs) Have you ever had a restless night? Worried about a project the next day? Perhaps you have a test in school. Perhaps you have to have a difficult conversation with someone at work. Perhaps you had a fight with your spouse. There's a lot of things that our minds at nighttime are just going over and over and over and over and over. And we lose sleep. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and they come to an end without hope. (laughs) If you really reflect, I'm not too sure exactly what a weaver's shuttle is, other than it's something that spins relatively quickly. And so that's saying that life goes fast. And he has a negative, come to an end without hope. Have you ever experienced hopelessness? Despair? Darkness like nothing's going to change? And then he concludes with this, I shall not see happiness again. Perhaps you've experienced that with the death of a spouse or the death of a child or the sickness of a loved one where you can get overwhelmed by the pain that comes with that. And so what's really intended to happen today with the reading is that as we listen to the word of God, we don't want to just say, oh, that's an interesting story about Job 2,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago. Rather, Mm. I can relate to that. I've had moments like that. That's, that's, that's capturing what I've experienced. And then in the readings, we see that how the responsorial psalm will respond using God's word to the first reading. So there's this sense of hopelessness, and we hear, praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Talk about a glimmer of hope in the midst of difficulties. And like that, when you say brokenhearted, a lot of times you think of like, oh yeah, your girlfriend dumped you in high school and now you're all bummed and it's like a romantic relationship that went south. But really, if you look at the word brokenhearted in the scriptures, by the heart is the center of who a person is. It's the place where we make decisions. It's the center of our experience. And so if we really think about it, if you lived 10 years or more in your life, And even if you live less than that, you might experience, but not necessarily reflect on it. You've experienced moments of brokenheartedness. Whether that's in a frustration of something you did that you regret, maybe in a failed relationship, maybe in a sickness. And if we really look at that that theologically, if we understand properly the meaning of original sin, it means that basically we're all born broken. We all have the best intentions, but how many of us do the things we don't want to do, as Paul says? How many have set out a, I'm going to do this, and then after a little bit, it dissipates? Or how many times people have not said, why did I say that in that argument? I shouldn't have said that. Or perhaps you've gone to confession and you're like, like I fall again, Father, I'm just going to like, you know, the same old, same old. The Lord heals the brokenhearted. So what that helps us is to realize that there are things within us that are outside of our ability to heal. And it's God who is the one who desires to heal that. And beautifully in the psalm, it says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. 
And then he goes on, this is, he tells the number of the stars, he calls each by name. So again, the Psalms are poet, poems, so we're reflecting on this poetry. So God, the desire of God is to bring healing into our lives. He, he wants to help us when we experience the suffering and the hardships of life. Because if we're honest, life is difficult. Life is beautiful. We have moments of beauty. But if we really analyze it, it's filled with drudgery. It's difficult. And it's our faith in God that gives us a little bit of, not a little bit, it gives us meaning, it gives us purpose, it gives us focus. And as I was reflecting that, it talks about how the Lord tells the number of stars and he calls each by name. Have you ever reflected on this? How, how many stars are in our galaxy? So like, there's no one who literally can count every star, but astronomers estimate over 100 billion stars. <laughs> You can't even comprehend. Do you know, if you tried to count to a billion starting now, one, two, three, and you want to go to a billion, you know how long it would take you? 32 years. I mean, it's just incomprehensible. But do you know that there's over 100 billion galaxies in our universe? <laughs> and so astronomers, again, project, I think the number was 200 million billion. They says it's 200 sextillion whatever that means. It's a two with 23 zeros after it. <laughs> but God tells the number of the stars and he calls each by name. And so I think what we can take away from this is that this incomprehensible number that we have no way to wrap our minds around is saying that the God of the universe, if he can know all of the stars, how much more would he know individuals who are made in his image and likeness? And so as we really reflect and we dig deep in that passage, what we're seeing here is we're seeing God saying, your life is important to me. I know what's going on in your life. I care for you. I love you. Too often I hear this and it really makes me sad. People, Oh, Father, oh, God must be so busy. He doesn't have time for my little problems. There's so many big things going on in the world. Well, yeah, there are big things going on in the world, but your problems are a concern for God. Your difficulties, your brokenheartedness. That's why Jesus ultimately came. Because in the gospel, as we see, we're looking at the first chapter of Mark. So it's still the beginning. And we see last week, Jesus you healed a man possessed by demons, something supernatural. And in today, we see Jesus healing his mother, Peter's mother-in-law who was sick with a fever. Perhaps a natural sickness. And so what we see here is that in the beginning of the scriptures, Jesus is being introduced as one who has supernatural power to bring healing to people in a variety of circumstances. And what that's intended to do, it goes on further. It says people began coming to him and bringing their sick to him. And those who were possessed by demons. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing a spectrum of what God can do. He can deal with physical maladies, emotional maladies, and most importantly, spiritual maladies. And that's the desire of our God. He wants to bring healing to us. And so as the church has reflected on this, it's often one of the titles of Jesus is Jesus as the divine physician. And so in our, in our church today, our church is known as the body of Christ. And so... The body of the church is the body of Christ in space and time. In other words, in 2024, Jesus continues his healing mission today through his church. So Jesus still wants to be able to bring healing into our lives. And ultimately, the fullness of Jesus' love for us to bring healing is through his own death on the cross and his resurrection. Because what that says to us when we look at this with the eyes of faith is that there's no suffering, there's no sin, and not even death itself is powerful enough to overcome our God. What it's saying, in other words, is our God is all-powerful, stronger than death, suffering, and any sin. And so what that means is Jesus wants to continue to help each and every one of us. And so we experience the healing power of Jesus through the church in a particular way, first and foremost, through the reading of the word of God. The inspired word of God is intended to 
shed light into misconceptions we have. Or perhaps we feel like we're insignificant. And the word of God is saying, no, you are significant. We experience the healing mission and the healing ministry of Jesus through the sacraments. Particularly, there's two sacraments of healing in the church known as holy, um, excuse me, confession or reconciliation and anointing of the sick. In fact, yesterday we had uh, 39 uh, children receive a sacrament of reconciliation for the first time. So it was a wonderful experience to see them. And often these little kids uh, are learning the format. <laughs> uh, I like to say it's, it's, it's when you listen to kids' confessions, it's like getting pelted with popcorn, you know. <laughs> but what it is, is it's a powerful way when we use this sacrament well, that God can bring healing into our lives. We need to be honest and to be vulnerable and to trust that God is working. But when we expose our sin to God in, our, in the, in the uh, sacraments, the Lord can bring a deep, profound healing to help us persevere. And just one side note, I've heard many people say, well, Father, that's nice and everything, but I go directly to God. Well, I mean, that's good that you go directly to God. That's the first step we should do. But God himself, Jesus gave us this sacrament. So, you know, I unfortunately I want to say this, and I don't want to get off on a bad tangent, but like we, this sacrament is one of the most neglected sacraments because often it's felt like it's not really, well, I mean, let's be honest, it's hard. I hate going to confession because I got to go to the priest I know. <laughs> no, I don't hate going to confession, but my point is like, it's not easy. But what it does is when we're open and vulnerable and we have that gift of faith, the supernatural power that comes from Jesus Christ can touch our hearts and to give us the grace we need to persevere. To not give in to despair and hopelessness. To have a fresh start. To know that we are forgiven and loved by God. And then, beautifully, every Sunday we gather together as a community to celebrate the great mystery of God's love. And so Jesus himself, under the forms of bread and wine, are made present here. The same Jesus who helped, healed uh, people in the, in the gospel is here to give us the encouragement, to bring healing to our brokenhearted, to help us through the drudgeries of life. And then one last way that the healing ministry of Jesus continues in today is through a faith-filled community. Your presence here is important because if... No one was here. Like, I'm going to say it this way. Your presence here shows that there's more than just yourself who believe in God. You look around and we're here. We're all here. Each person has a different story, but we're gathered together because of our faith in God and God to help us. And so the way God often works is that he also works through you. And so having a community, an environment, someone where you can speak to, someone you can listen to, who listens to you, their encouraging word can help you in that healing the healing ministry of Jesus continues through the community as well. So in a week and a half, we're going to start uh, a Lent. And so perhaps it's a great question to start reflecting upon. Where do I need healing in my life, Lord? Where do I experience brokenheartedness? What are those areas of our life that I need to open to you so that you can bring your transformative love into my life? Because the scriptures are shouting at us, not at us in a negative way, but they're trying to jump off the page and saying, God is for us, not against us. God wants to give us the graces we need so that we can experience the change in our lives that we need. God meets us wherever we are at, but he doesn't want us to stay there. He wants us to be more and more like him so that our lives reflect him, our minds think like him, and our hearts love like him. So as we continue this Mass today, perhaps we'll just take a quiet moment in the silence of your hearts, close your eyes if you wish, or just to pause for a moment and ask that question. Jesus, where do I need healing? Where do I experience brokenheartedness? Jesus, give me the faith to believe that you can bring the healing I need. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us salvation, he came down from heaven. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. Gathered in the name of Christ, we humbly come before the Father to present our needs. That the church may be strengthened by the Spirit in its ministry of spreading the good news of Jesus throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all couples may grow in their love for each other and be signs of God's unconditional love to each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Christian lawmakers will actively promote justice through the legal means entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who echo Job's cry, those struggling to survive, fleeing violence, or searching for food, that the Spirit will give them strength and that open their hearts, our hearts, to assist them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are working to establish peace, that the Spirit will lead their dialogue and inspire new pathways to establish lasting peace and mutual understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the people of our parishes and all families, that our merciful Father may continue to bless us, keep us, and help us to grow together in love and faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick throughout the world may have strength and wisdom to unite their sufferings to those of Christ and obtain his peace and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Santa Moed, Anthony Moed, and are recently deceased, that they may be welcomed into God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold close to our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are the source of our hope and strength. As you answer our prayers, keep us always close to you and bring us salvation through Christ our Lord. As we offer our gifts to the Father, we join in singing number 728, I Has Not Seen. Number 728.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty, our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a perfect sacrifice, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was entered, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for your unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the, of, of the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and, and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alfred, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you stand under my roof, but only so worthy of my soul.
as we come forward to receive Jesus, we join in singing number 735, Blessed Are They, number 735.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. On Saturday, we celebrated the Feast of St. Blaise, and the day before, Friday, February 2nd, is known as Candle Mass Day. And so the tradition of the church is to bless throats. Uh, through the intercession of St. Blaise. Um, so after the Mass, after the final blessing during the hymn, we'll uh, have four stations. If you wish to have your throat blessed, feel free to come th- forward. Uh, and again, uh, it's not magic. It's a sacramental of the church. And when it's a reminder of that, I like to meditate this way. It's a reminder that our, even the small things of the world are important to God and that he'll watch over us. So if you wish to have that blessing, feel free to do so. Have a great week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Just a couple of announcements. Next weekend, after all the Masses, the youth group will be taking donations for the annual Super Bowl of Caring. Thank you in advance for your generosity. The choir is selling nut rolls until March 6th. They are $17 each and will be ready for pickup Palm Sunday weekend. There are extra order forms in the vestibule. And a reminder about Cooks with Collars. Father Keith is 24th out of 44. A reminder, remember that proceeds from all votes go directly back to our parish. All information is on our homepage. Vote early, vote often. Voting ends on February 12th. Renewed in faith, we go forth singing number 636, Now Thank We All Our God, number 636. Thank you.